Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and I am in the throngs of soup season. I love soups. Soups are happiness to me in a bowl. They're like a warm hug. They are just one of those things that just make everything better. And what better time of year is there to share a soup with you than after I was inspired by eating my favorite sandwich? The other day, I was with my sister, and we shared an absolutely delicious Reuben sandwich. Now, do you know what a Reuben is? I'm sure you do, but if you don't, a Reuben is essentially pastrami or corned beef, I prefer pastrami, uh, that is on a really delicious, usually buttered marble rye bread, or sometimes just rye bread with the caraway seeds in there. And then it is basically grilled with some Swiss cheese. Um, sometimes people can use Munster or mozzarella, but Swiss is common as well as lined with some Russian or Thousand Island dressing and some sauerkraut. It's basically like a grilled cheese with pastrami, sauerkraut, and Russian dressing on it, all right? To just put it in a nutshell. It's outrageous, it's delicious, and I actually like to dip it in some additional extra uh, Thousand Island or Russian dressing. But since it is soup season, I said to myself, well, why don't we turn that magnificent sandwich into a cream of blank soup. You know, there's the cream of categories, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, I have cream of bacon, uh, cream of carrot, cream of celery, things like that. We're gonna now do a cream of Reuben. It's being added to the cream of family today, and we're going right to the Instant Pot to do this in minutes. It is so easy, it's like laughably, ridiculously easy to make, and it's going to be one of the most show-stopping soups you've ever had. I am talking a deconstructed Reuben as a soup. So let's go right to the Instant Pot, and we're gonna make some absolutely delicious soup, and while it's cooking, we can sit on the stoop, because this is that quick. Cream Reuben done now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in two pounds of Idaho or baking or russet, they're really pretty much all the same type of potato that I've just peeled and I've cut into chunks like this. Um, if you want to use baby potatoes, you can just skip the step of peeling them because the skins will be okay. At the end of the day, these are all going to be blended into the soup when done. So two pounds worth. And then we're gonna add in our broth, and you're gonna use four cups of any kind of broth of your choice. For this, I am using garlic broth, and to achieve that, I use Better Than Bouillon roasted garlic base. I used one teaspoon of the base to one cup of water equals one cup of broth. So four cups of broth means four teaspoons of the base mixed with four cups of water. You can optionally add in some sherry to the mix, which I like to do. I'm adding a quarter of a cup. If you're not gonna add the sherry, just add another quarter cup of broth but I like that sherry, it adds great flavor. And that, my friends, is all I have to do prior to pressure cooking for this one. There is no sauteing ahead of time. We're gonna secure the lid onto our Instant Pot, make sure we're in the sealing position. Now we wanna come down to the control panel and hit the pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. And I wanna go for five minutes at high pressure, adjust using the plus or minus buttons or a knob if that's what your model has. And then if your model has a start button, hit it, and if it doesn't have a start button, and after doing nothing after a few seconds, it'll go into the function. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're going to finish this off with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we are now going to take the lid off of our pot. And this is the fun part of the recipe, because we're now about to puree those potatoes into the broth using an immersion blender or a stick blender. These things are super herb, pun intended, because I don't have to transfer this hot soup into a blender in batches because you should really only go halfway and it's going to be hot, it's going to be messy and it's just, no, forget it. Use one of these. They're super affordable. I'm going to link where you can get them and every single person who loves to make soups, especially chowders, should have one in their kitchen. So I'm going to add in my immersion blender in there, that's the end of it, and then just blend for about, I don't know, 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. And look at this, we are looking gorgeous. All my potatoes have been pureed into the broth, and, well, that's the cream of portion. Well, I guess it's not officially a cream of portion until I add some cream. Okay, now we're gonna hit the cancel button, and then we're gonna hit the saute button and make sure we're on the more or high setting. All right, and once everything in the pot begins to bubble, it should take about a minute, I'm going to add in two cups or a pint of heavy cream or half and half as well as a quarter of a cup of Russian or Thousand Island dressing. I am using Ken's Steakhouse Russian for this one. Uh, I find it to be the best kind of Russian dressing I can get in the store. Plus, your Russian dressing should be this color. If it's not, don't get that red kind. If it's not this color, use Thousand Island. A quarter of a cup. 
And of course, it's also not a Reuben unless we have some cheese. I'm gonna be using a whole pound of cheese, that's 16 ounces, and you can use some mozzarella, some Swiss, or a mix of the two, which is exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna be adding in eight ounces or two cups of mozzarella, that's shredded, as well as eight ounces or two cups of a Swiss cheese that you can either find shredded or you can just rip up some slices. Now we're gonna get a whisk and we're gonna whisk everything together. Whisk until the cheese is completely blended into the chowder. And just so you can get a sense of the cheese, look at this. Do you see this? Are you seeing what I'm doing here? You see how cheesy this soup is? Look at it, look at how cheesy. I'm not screwing around, guys. Cheesy, 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 like a Reuben should be. And then I'm gonna kill the heat. Now that we're completely blended in, this should take only about a minute tops of whisking the cheese into the chowder. It's not a Reuben without, in my opinion, pastrami, but you can totally also use corned beef instead. And I'm using a pound and a half of pastrami that I've got from the deli, sliced thin, and then I just basically diced it up. It's as simple as that. Add that into the chowder. And I also don't think it's a true Reuben chowder without some sauerkraut. You can use between a half a cup to a whole cup of, of sauerkraut. Normally in the market you'll find them by the hot dogs in like pound bags. You can use the whole bag if you want. Just drain it ahead of time. I'm starting with a half a, a cup. And then we're just going to stir everything into our cream of Reuben chowder here. Or I'll just call it cream of Reuben. And you'll see that the seasonings from the pastrami season the soup beautifully as well. It's that beautiful color, the texture is perfect. If you want more sauerkraut, like I said, you can add more sauerkraut. And after tasting it, if you find you want some more Russian dressing in there, or Thousand Island, you can add up to another quarter cup if you want. You could add up to a whole cup if you want total, it's up to you. Start with a quarter of a cup though. Look, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Probably another quarter cup. Totally up to you though. I'm gonna just stir that in. And just look at this beautiful soup, loaded, with pastrami, I mean, cheese and potatoes blended into it. It is gorgeous. All right, let's ladle into some bowls. Of course, you can also top it off with additional pastrami if you have some lying around for garnish, if you want to give it a little floater, as well as some sauerkraut if you'd like. And, of course, it's really not a pastrami Reuben without some rye bread or some caraway seed. You see caraway seed here? You can also put some caraway seed on top for a garnish. I wouldn't necessarily put the caraway in the soup itself, although you can. Start with, I don't know, a teaspoon, and you can go as much as a tablespoon if you want. But the caraway seed does make for a nice garnish. And you can also add in some croutons. I'm using some rye croutons because, you know, Reuben's and rye bread, it's a nice homage to the whole situation. So we really have a Reuben sandwich now transformed into a soup, which looks glorious. So what are we going to do? We're going to try it out. Let's do it. Okay, guys, and here it is, my cream of Reuben. I can hardly wait. Here we go. Okay, are we seeing this? Here we go. Let's do it all. I got the pastrami, the sauerkraut, uh, the crouton, the rye crouton, the caraway seed on there. Fabulous garnishes. Let's do it. Well, <laughs> there's really no other way to tell you that you're going to experience a Reuben as a soup, other than you actually making cream of Reuben soup. Um, if you love a Reuben, like I do, it's by far and large my favorite sandwich, and you love soup, you've just gotten invited to the greatest and most delicious wedding in the galaxy. This soup is amazing. Not only is it going to be a warm hug, like when you're sitting on your sofa or at your dining room table or you know just walking around the house eating it like I would do while I'm watching TV mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like that well it's gonna be also something that's just gonna please every single person you serve it to and they're gonna be like what a crazy and interesting idea and why didn't I think of that it's got everything that you have in a Reuben like I said but as a soup it's like a deconstructed Reuben uh, I can't get enough of it in fact the pastrami. Mm. Mm. You'll notice I didn't put any seasoning in the soup. 
It needs none. Because don't forget, in addition to the broth, we're adding in that pastrami, which has you know that wonderful salty smoked flavor in there. You have the cheese in there as well. The Russian dressing that we're adding in there adds a great amount of flavor. Again, I start with a quarter of a cup, but you can go really up to a half a cup. If you really want an intense, go up to three quarters to a whole cup. You can do that to taste. Start with a quarter cup. But I actually find that like a half a cup is probably the best medium there, okay? Just FYI. And the croutons. They send it home because you have that like Reuben buttery like bread that you have Reuben on is now present technically in the soup. If you want to just butter your own rye bread and put and, and, and grill it and then slice it up and put it in there, you can do that too. But I found, you know, like I, I like the Texas, to let me show you what I like. Where's the, where are they? Where, there they are. I love these croutons specifically for it. These Texas toast, New York bakery, Texas toast Caesar croutons. I find they're like my favorite croutons and I definitely don't have to just use them in Caesar salad. I love these croutons in French onion soup too. So there you have it my friends. Cream of Reuben soup done to perfection. It is just so, so good. And it's one of those recipes where I was like, I wish I had you know another book coming out anytime soon so I could put this in there because it belongs in a book. It's that good. Thank you so much for watching my friends. If you enjoy these videos, check out my YouTube channel which is at Pressure Luck. Um, or Pressure Luck Cooking, just you know, YouTube it. Every single one of my recipes has a video that goes along with it, and you'll find all my written recipes at PressureLuckCooking.com, which is my blog, all recipes there are free. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, like I said, I've written cookbooks, I've written five in fact. This recipe has less than 10 ingredients, so it would be great in my super shortcut instant pot where every single recipe in every book has color step-by-step -step photos, as well as a final shot and a timing bar for each. Do you love pasta? Instant potting not really your thing? Well, I got the easiest, most unbelievably diverse pasta book ever. It's one pot to boil pasta, one pan to make sauce, and then we just marry them in that pan together, and it is so easy, and you're gonna have a huge array of pasta dishes. Again, all color step-by-step -step photos for every recipe. We're talking over 750 color photos in that book, and in all the books, in fact. Go to facebook.com slash cooking. Make sure you like that page, choose first. Make sure you follow me so I pop up in your feeds. You don't wanna miss some great soup recipes. And um, you, uh, you, uh, at Pressure Lock Cooking on Instagram, you follow me there as well. Thank you so much again for watching, my friends. And the next time the weather is brisk and you meet up some friends and you say to them, "Where have you been?" Make them an absolutely delicious cream of Reuben. <laughs> that one took a few seconds to come up with. <laughs> Enjoy. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Magnificent. Mm.